When it comes to recognizing the most favored components among PC gamers, the Steam Hardware Survey serves as a dependable resource for assessing user preferences. Starting from November 2022, the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 has consistently retained its status as the graphics card most commonly used by Steam users who actively take part in the survey. Despite a gradual decline in its usage, mainly due to the availability of more reasonably priced new and used cards, the GTX 1650 has managed to sustain a user base of 5.11% among participating Steam users as of August 2023. The GTX 1650 was introduced by NVIDIA in 2019 with an initial price tag of $149. US While it may not measure up to its more robust touring counterparts, it did offer an affordable option for 1080p gaming before graphics card prices skyrocketed. It utilizes the TU-117 core manufactured with a 12 nanometer process featuring 896 shading units, 56 texture mapping units, and 32 render output units in its render configuration. The reference card's base and boost clock speeds are 1485 and 1665 MHz respectively. In terms of memory, the 1650 is equipped with 4GB of GDDR5 on a 128-bit bus width. Notably, this card maintains a low power consumption profile with a TDP of just 75 watts and a recommended power supply wattage of 250 watts. I personally own a low-profile model of the GTX 1650 from Gigabyte, which I managed to acquire for an incredible $50. This price is quite remarkable considering that low-profile versions of the 1650 are typically more valuable and rare, often commanding a much higher price. Even the more common standard size 1650 models will usually run about $90 or more on the used market. And speaking of low-profile cards, the 1650 ranks among the most powerful in this category behind cards like the Quadro A2000 and the new RTX 4060. The low-profile 1650 along with the 1050 Ti and Radeon RX 6400, thanks to their low TDP, are excellent choices for reviving older small form factor desktop PCs. Today, I'm excited to put the GTX 1650 through its paces, testing it in a variety of older and newer titles to see how it holds up in 2023. For this evaluation, I'll be using my test system, which consists of the i3-10105F processor, 16GB of DDR4 RAM running at 2666MHz, and Windows 10 installed on a speedy NVMe SSD. All components, including the graphics card, will be running at their stock settings, and I'll be utilizing a capture card for on-screen recording. I'll primarily rely on graphics presets that provide a smooth gaming experience, and all games will be set to a resolution of 1920x1080p. First up, I ran the Unigen Superposition benchmark at 1080p with medium settings and it delivered a score of 6949 with an average frame rate of 52 FPS. This is a pretty respectable benchmark that gives me an idea of what the gaming performance may look like for this card. Moving on to CSGO, the GTX 1650 performed impressively well at 1080p with max settings, consistently achieving over 200 FPS and averaging around 224 FPS in a bot match on Dust2. In Rocket League, I saw an average of over 180 FPS at 1080p maximum. This shows that the GTX 1650 can provide enough performance for anyone who just wants to play most esports games competitively. GTA 5, set at the highest graphic settings at 1080p, presented a bit more of a challenge, averaging in the low 80s for frame rates. While this is still a commendable gaming experience, it falls short of the 100 FPS mark consistently, especially when compared to more powerful budget cards that I've tested. In Fortnite, with DX12 rendering mode at 1080p, I achieved an average frame rate in the mid-70s. My settings included mostly high options with the far view distance and most optional settings disabled. This result indicates that GTX 1650 is more than capable of handling the lower competitive settings. Assassin's Creed Unity, set to 1080p with the high preset, performed well with an average of around 77 FPS, although there were some noticeable drops in frame rate in the densely populated areas of Paris. This is a great result considering that a game like this can cause lower end hardware to struggle. Really anything over 60 FPS at high in a game like AC Unity provides awesome gameplay overall. In Assassin's Creed Origins at 1080p with the medium preset, the benchmark ended with an average of 62 FPS, though it wasn't the most stable throughout which could be partly attributed to the occasional CPU usage peaks which have consistently been a problem for me when testing certain cards. 
I'm intending to upgrade to something like an i5-10400 as soon as I can find a reasonable deal on one. Moving on, I tested Forza Horizon 5 at 1080p with the low preset, resulting in a solid benchmark run with an average of 96 FPS. The GTX 1650 might even handle the medium preset or some settings tweak while maintaining a respectable average frame rate, as long as you consider the 4GB of VRAM. In Horizon Zero Dawn, also at the 1080p low preset, the benchmark concluded with a smooth average of 74 FPS. It's possible that this card could handle higher settings while maintaining around 60 FPS if you manage memory usage. Speaking of that 60 FPS target, I played some of the early game in Red Dead Redemption 2 at the lowest settings in 1080p. While averaging a very playable 60 FPS, I believe that this game truly shines at higher settings which the 1650 cannot handle. This sentiment extends to the less optimized Cyberpunk 2077 which still achieved an average of 59 FPS in the benchmark at the 1080p low preset. Both of these games would be playable to someone who just wants a solid experience and doesn't need a ton of graphic fidelity. In summary, with some of these more demanding titles, the GTX 1650 does reveal its limitations, particularly for playing AAA games at higher settings. However, for most gaming scenarios, including lower settings and esports, the GTX 1650 is more than sufficient for an enjoyable experience. Its value proposition would be even more compelling if it weren't for the higher than ideal use prices, often exceeding $90. Nonetheless, if you manage to snag a GTX 1650 for less than $70, as I did, it's a solid purchase, provided that it aligns with your intended usage. Some better budget-friendly alternatives in a similar price range include the RX 5600 XT, GTX 1070, and even NVIDIA's Turing counterparts like the 1660 Super and 2060, just to name a few. In the grand scheme of things, the GTX 1650's popularity amongst gamers likely stems from the challenging GPU market conditions of the past few years. It's probable that the RTX 3060 will soon overtake it in the Steam hardware survey as the newest generation of cards settles into the market and more users move on from their 1650s. Nonetheless, I can appreciate what the 1650 represented to the GPU landscape when it was new. An efficient, relatively affordable card that meets the needs of most users. If you enjoy content like this, where I review older and budget-friendly PC hardware, please consider subscribing to the channel. Your feedback and content suggestions are valuable, so please leave your comments and questions below. Thank you.